Hi guys, this is Sam and today we're going to be looking at Azure Site Recovery. It is a built-in disaster recovery as a service in Azure, right? And why is it there for? As the name suggests, it is there for the continuation of your business if a disaster happens. Say, so uh, let's look at the Azure regions here. So this is the Azure region. You should know what is the region by now if you're following my labs. So in the region, say in West US2, you are renting, you know, whole data center or half of the site. And as you can see that that thing west us2 is right at the coast yeah right at the pacific ocean and what happened if due to natural disaster like calamity like if there's a flooding or something or even a human error the whole sites goes down and if you renting this data center to run a web server for example where your employees or your customers trying to reach you through the website they won't be able to reach if all the servers get shut down there and hence asr kicks in here so what's, what what it does asr azure site recovery it keep replicating your virtual machines where you are running your web servers your file server or whatever you're running it it keeps replicating it to another region okay and that region can be anywhere okay so this is what we're going to be looking in today we're going to be doing a quick lab so as per the scenario let me show you this is my web server my web server is actually running in v, uh, west us2 yeah uh, let me show you what i'm running in my web server so let me copy that ip address and uh, quickly show you so say you have you have a customer and the customer come and uh, connect to them to this website and you are running a video streaming uh, web website website for the customer and a flooding happens in west us2 and your server goes down right so customer cannot get to your website well of course they bought the subscription so they will kick about right so let's go back in our azure so what we're going to be doing today let's start configuring our um, asr or site recovery or azure site recovery this is not to be confused with backup or storage that's a completely different subject site recovery especially there to recover your site to recover your business to continue to to, uh, to keep uh, running business in continuation okay so for that what we do first thing first we're gonna click on site recovery and in here now at the moment my web server is running in west us2 now this is telling me do you want to create a site recovery if i may scroll down a little bit yeah this is telling me do you do i want to create the site recovery for east us so that's going to be my target region original region west us2 which is this one and east us is this one so this is really means that this wants to uh, replicate my virtual machine in this region okay i'm happy with that i can choose another region but i'm happy for the demo person i'm absolutely happy with it uh, let's click on advanced setting on the top now this is gonna tell me on the first section target settings under target settings it's only going to tell me that this is my subscription right it can be a paid subscription or a trial subscription whatever in the subscription this is literally going to create my resource group my virtual networks and all that this is lit it's going to copy from one region to another region and when it's going to copy to another region it's going to create all these things in there notice that in the end of each of these names it's going to put a suffix asr azure site recovery yeah this is how we're going to identify our target region okay right scroll down and there is something called storage settings in here and you can say that it's going to create a cache storage account okay this is going to create a cache storage account and also it's going to create a disk for replication so cache is cache storage account is it's going to get created in our original region west us2 where we are running our server now okay this is this is there because when the replication happened it's going to do the replication within the cache storage first and then it's going to throw that replication from cached storage to the target location where our VM is going to be, uh, our virtual disk is going to be located. I will show you everything in a minute. Yep. Okay. Rest is fine. It's only going to tell you the names of, you know, the target region, like, you know, in East US, what is going to create and all that. So everything's looking fine to me. I don't think so. We need to change anything else. Uh, literally, I haven't changed anything. I just clicked on it. So I review it on here on the basics. I, I just, you know, I'm have I told Azure, I'm happy with East US, the target region. And then I quickly click on advanced and I'm happy with all the settings. As long as you understand what, what you're going to click next for, I mean, just go ahead. So let's click on review and start replication. And it's going to tell you the settings of the replication here. So if you want, you can review all the settings and then hit start replication. So now it's going to start creating the you know resources in your target location, which is East US right at this point i have to pause it because this could take a good an hour well it depends on the web server it depends on the virtual machine and disk yeah so let's pause the video and we come back when the replication is finished okay hi guys 
10 minutes gone past and it is telling me here that your deployment is complete but don't fall for it because if you uh, see on the top right on the notification bell icon it is you know you can see some graphics some lines coming up and all that so best is to click on that so let's click on that and it's still enabling the replication if i click on that it's telling me exactly what resources has been done so it's telling me successful but if you still look on it the replication still happening yeah so do not do anything do not go further do not start clicking here and there and go into the region until this has stopped okay guys all that has finished now so i can click on that bell notification icon and i can see that green tick or rather white tick in the green circle so i now know that it's all done so let's click on home and let's click on resource group and in there now these two they are resource group belong to my original location okay but apart from that asr has created something my web server dash asr yep and site recovery vault rg so if i click on that my web server dot asr so just remember in that resource group i at the moment i can only see uh, a virtual network and a disk there okay nothing else and that's sitting in east us location yeah this is our target location great okay so let's go back in our web server and let me find my virtual machine which is this one this is where i'm running my uh, website so this is my web server and now if i scroll down and click on site recovery so i can see now that you know the options has been changed now so i can see all these different options here are great but this is what i'm really uh, interested in so it says last successful test failover never been performed really so once your asr is configured once your resource has been created the first thing you're gonna do is just to test it how is it is it working or not yeah so when we're gonna test it what is this gonna do this is gonna create a replication of the current uh, state of virtual machine and it's gonna put it back in the resource group of asr where we have just seen two things that was vnet and a disk nothing else okay so let me click on test failover and let's test our failover and literally it's telling me it's going to be towards our target location and yeah so all in in this win window all you have to do is click on here and select your my web server vnet asr azure site recovery and let's click ok and then it has starting the test failover what this really means that it is now replication uh, sorry it is now replicating the virtual machine in there yeah and it's going to create another disk in there yeah so once this is done i'll show you and that will be more understandable for you so let's pause the video now okay so the test failover has now complete so when it's complete obviously you can see that there is no issue down there and it is showing you clean up test failover yeah this rpo is nothing is recovery point object so for the uh, virtual machine it's uh, one day for the database it can be as little as 15 minutes and that's really like replication we're talking about if you want to know more about it you can go on microsoft learn and study but that's a little bit advanced thing we can always control it yeah but let's stick to our basic lab at this moment yeah so we have done a test failover and now we can see this option but why this option is there and what is actually done right let's have a look so if we click on home and if we click on resource groups and remember that resource group we saw earlier which has got asr in the end it had two things in there a virtual network and a disk let's click on that and now what happened the test failover is actually created more resources in there it has created a nick it has created of some uh, virtual machine and it has created disk as well so what happened that the rep, uh, rep well test failover replicated our disk to this disk the original disk which was sitting here and then it created a virtual machine this vm has got this vnet attached to it yeah and a nic interface that that means there are some rules in there probably inbound and outbound rule and also a new disk has been created out of the original disk it's, it's literally it means that disk is copied from the original disk and attached to the virtual machine so a replicated disk is copies into a new disk and create a virtual machine and attach uh, attach that uh, disk i mean azure attach that disk into that virtual machine so test failover actually created another virtual machine with a disk and nick in our target location simple 
right what happened that this virtual machine you can test if it's running or not yeah you can always click on it and you can uh, if you want you can rdp into it or you can even uh, you you can even test it working or not yeah so that has been created yeah but in order to do rdp you need to enable the public ip address but this is just test failover we wanted to test here yeah, we don't want to do rdp on this one this was just to see if the test is working or not we will do that uh, when it's when we're going to do failover in next stage okay so if i go back in my home and if i click on resource group and if i go back in my original resource group where my original web server is sitting which is here and let's scroll down and click on site recovery again and in here uh, we've done our test failover so what that's been done we want to clean up those those resources which has been created yeah otherwise we will be charged for it we wanted to test test is successful we have seen what has been created after triggering this test failover so let's clean up the test failover so let's click on that and uh, i can say this was just testing really we're just testing and if i take that then what happened that any vm which is created in the target location and any other resources during that which we have seen it is gonna be deleted so let's click on ok and it has started doing it let's pause the video and come back when it's done okay so that cleanup test over uh, test failover uh, those resources that option is gone and all it is telling me here this replication is healthy okay so uh, we we've done the test failover it's been successful we deleted the resources okay now what we want if you like to you know double check you can go back in the resource groups and that resource group which has got ASR in the end you can click on that here and you can see those VM virtual machine that Nick and the disk which was attached to VM has been deleted now okay so test failover was successful now we will put this into real practice so we will assume that something happened, a disaster is happened on the web, uh, on that site. And how are you going to save your web server here? Okay, this is what we're going to be go th going through now. So if I click on my virtual machine web server and show you the IP address again, and let's open that in here. So this is the web server. This is my website running for the customer. They come in in here and watching the films. Okay, go back. And what happened if something happened, a disaster happened? All we have to do is come in back here in Azure, click on that VM, come on the site recovery. And at this point, this is not about test failover. That is done. This is about real failover. Okay, let's click on that. In real failover, obviously, it's going to tell you your original and the target zone. Yeah, it's going to tell you which checkpoint you want to go back to. I'm going to choose my latest one. Okay, and once that failover has created a virtual machine other side in the target location what do you want to do with this original vm the original vm yeah it's not running anyway your site is flooded right so let's shut down in a, you know anyway let's shut it down so let's keep this option thing just make sure you choose the correct recovery point here yeah everything else is be will be done for you so let's click on okay and now starting the failover failover completed so now what we can do, we can uh, click on home again and go back in our resource group and find our virtual machine there from our original location, which was US2, West US2. And if I click on my web server, that's my VM. So it doesn't have any uh, public IP address uh, because we stopped it after the failover, because there's a failover due to disaster at the site. But once you did the failover, it has done the same thing what we did in test failover. That means in our resource group, which has got ASR in the end, it has created a virtual machine there from the latest uh, checkpoint yeah, or replicated point. Yeah. So if I click on that. Now, did this VM is created okay, in East US. It doesn't have an IP address, public IP address. So what we after, we can have a public IP address and we can take it to our uh, DNS record and put that IP address uh, you know, in, in our A records. Yeah, and our website is up and running for our customer. Of course, everything can be automated, but manually, how are you gonna get that public IP address, right? So if I click on networking, and if I click on my NIC network interface, so this is the one which is attached to my virtual machine, and in there, I would want to click on IP configuration. 
and I can see that under that I've got one uh, private uh, let let's me expand it so it's more yeah so I can see I've got one private IP address listed here but if I click on that okay so here I can actually now obtain a public IP address so for that I have to click on associate and then I have to click on create new and I just have to define a name for it so I can simply say my web server from ESR yeah and I can if I want I can create static really and I can click OK and I can click on OK here again I'll click on save and it's now creating a public IP address for the VM which is sitting in our failover ASR okay so I can now go back I can now go back on my web server and click OK here and then click on overview so this is the virtual machine yeah and it has now got a public IP address here so all I have to do with the stick just do my DNS AD and change the AD code but of course we can test it in here as well so so our website is up and running yeah there are so many ways to automate it the, the the another way you can do it that every time you fail over uh, this thing in Azure, they will have the same uh, private IP address from you know what your VM has got in your original location. So what you can do, you can do the pairing of uh, VNet and put all this behind the load balancer. So there are so many ways. There are Azure function as well if you want to automate it. But that comes later. You need to understand how this works, and this manual lab is very good for it. Okay. So now what is happening here that we have failed over. In a real-time environment create a, a virtual machine which is great but how would you take this virtual machine back in the original location from target location yeah so I'm now talking about the reverse strategy for that I would simply drag it down and I will click on where are you site recovery again yeah so in site recovery first thing first I have got something called commit yeah if I click on commit that means I cannot go back to any other uh, point where the replication took place I'm just committing it and this is gonna clean off any older replication point so let's click on commit and let's click on ok so that's been committed once this committed I want you to uh, keep an eye on these options so now as you can see all the options on the top are grayed out apart from these two options so now that means the committed you know that it's been committed now we've done the proper failover and that copy we have the replicated copy of our VM we have in the ASR region is committed and this is the pure VM we have we cannot go back to any other point now I'm gonna click on reprotect and what this does this will replicate my VM from this location to my original location so I'm doing the reversing from target to original and once I click on reprotect right it's gonna show you here from East US to our West US to from target to original location okay and click on OK and it's validating and submitting the deployment and deployment will start and that will take resources from here to there okay so this is still reprotecting that reprotect means it has done the well the deployment is succeeded but that means when resources are getting created it's been two minutes let's click on that reprotecting VM so I can see that what's things been done and what needs what what are the dues things to be done here so I can keep an eye on here and then I can pause it again I kept refreshing things and eventually now it's shown successful so this is is our uh, 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 target location okay let's go back our original location for that I will click on home and I will click on resource group and I will go back in the resource group where where is our original web server is sitting so here it is and if I click on that okay so now uh, this was stopped and things has got replicated back in here now so all I have to do is just start it okay you will have error message on here and the reason is that if I scroll down and go back in Azure site recovery here you will see that something is happening here so yeah there you are you can see that at the moment it's not synchronized yet so we will wait until the VM is fully synchronized 100% and then we'll try to start it okay now this is taking a little bit longer than I realized so what I'm gonna do 
after this is done 100 percent fully synchronized i'm going to go back in the resource group and i will show you in that virtual machine that it's running and uh, with the public ip address we can even access our website back so this was like the from the old ip address but we can access once this is fully synchronized okay so i'm gonna pause it now and i'm gonna show you when everything else is recovered the synchronization is done and now i will copy my ip address and paste it in the web browser to see the same website but guys i'm having to hide it because i'm using same ip address for my next lab okay there you are so what i would recommend do this lab at least two times and then be easy for you and i will see you in my next lab we're going to be doing azure sql